Hi, my name is Cheryl Coulter. I'm an associate with Too Good Consulting, where I work as a counselor and mental performance assistant. Welcome to our micro session on self-help for coaches. While there are many qualities that can describe coaches, including patient, caring, honest, selfless, confident, and resilient, perhaps the most resounding one is passionate. Coaches often describe their work not as a job, but as a vocation or a calling. And this calling is passion driven. In our micro session today, we'll examine how coaches can work to harness this passion in a harmonious way that aligns positively with life and how to avoid becoming obsessively passionate in a way that is misaligned with other aspects of life. Since coaching is multi-dimensional, it can also be dynamics, complex, chaotic, and messy. And so we'll start by looking at the different stressors that coaches can experience, then identify the signs and symptoms of being obsessively driven, and share strategies for maintaining a harmonious passion for coaching to manage stress and avoid burnout. Now you'll know better than me what some of the potential stressors are that coaches can experience. These can be categorized into two different types. Those imposed externally, like the pressure to deliver results and the lack of time for administrative tasks. And the second category is internal stressors, such as having an all-in attitude or worry for athletes. These stressors, if left unchecked, can lead to burnout. Fortunately, there are many signs and symptoms that can act as cues to impending burnout. Some of the ones to assess and self-check regularly include deteriorating health, such as changes to sleep or regular nutrition, an inability to practice self-care, always thinking about the work, experiencing constant on tasks while not at work. So in other words, difficulty disengaging. This might also present as chronic fatigue and an inability to recover. Not truly enjoying the job. Of course, there are aspects of all jobs that we might not necessarily enjoy doing and would rather not do. Here, we would be noting a lack of enjoyment in the bigger picture. Noticing an impact on relationships with family or partner and making decisions with the heart instead of the head. This might be the biggest indication that one is becoming obsessively passionate with coaching. While impossible to remove many of the stressors experienced in the field of coaching, here are some strategies for managing the stress. Mental health continuum self-checks are essential for coaches to ensure longevity in the profession. Check out Game Plans MH101 for high-performance coaches or use my email provided at the end of the session to find out more about the mental health continuum. These self-checks provide a means for building self-awareness about stressors, anxiety responses, and current coping mechanisms. You can then analyze what you're noticing and start to make changes to move into a healthier state. Some of these changes might include prioritizing sleep, nutrition, physical activity, and downtime with family. Time away from home can be one of the most impactful stressors that coaches and their families must navigate. Some strategies to consider include creating a plan to transition from work to home, similar to a game day routine for athletes. Explore what works best for you. Think about when and how you will set aside work in order to engage and be present at home. A second consideration, maintaining open communication with your partner and family. This might look like simply committing to figuring it out as you go, or having a plan for communication while away. Um, planning for transition from travel back to home, exploring supports from family and friends while away, planning holiday for recovery, and outlining clear and realistic expectations for when you will be available. Developing a plan for recovery. The most important aspects here are acknowledging and understanding the undulations and cycles that come with training. Plan for them, and most importantly, build in recovery that is formal and ongoing. 
Recovery doesn't have to include a two-week vacation at the beach. It can be built into daily routine as well. When it comes to the onus of responsibility, rely on collaboration and consider mentorship. Plan for breaks and debriefing in a professional setting. And finally, think about developing an exit plan for an eventual move away from coaching. While this might be far into the future for some, having a plan in place can alleviate pressure and stress and provide reassurance. Here's a brief list of ways to decompress regularly. Getting exercise, spending time in nature, spending time with family, delegating responsibilities, practicing mindfulness and meditation, and reaching out for support as needed. Implementing many of these strategies will involve a shift in mindset, something that takes purposeful effort and time. Some of these might look like redefining success as the process and not the outcome, developing a growth mindset, acknowledging and accepting the sacrifice, emotional toll, and investment that comes in the profession of coaching. Passion and exha exhaustion cannot coexist. An exhausted athlete can't perform at their best, and an exhausted coach is not a high-performance coach. Recovery for athletes is carefully planned, monitored, and implemented, and we should be making coaches' recovery part of a yearly training plan as well. Value yourself as more than just a coach. We are all humans first. You are not responsible solely for the results. Trust in a team of people. Coaches have expertise in technical elements of their position, but aspects of psychological preparation and self-management can be learned through collaboration, support, and knowledge from others in those fields. During today's session, you'll have had heard words like plan, recover, and create repeated often. And so in conclusion, I encourage you to think about the following questions as you move through your next cycle of prepare, perform, recover, and evolve in sport. Where is your joy and where is your passion derived from? What is your vision for yourself as a coach? If you have any questions or would like more information on any aspects of the presentation today, please feel free to send me an email. Thank you for joining and I wish you the best in your continued journey in coaching.